It was a, this is a good win for our football team. Um, another hard fought struggle. It was just great to be able to come to the Rose Bowl in front of 80,000 plus again that, you know, keep showing up for us and, and get a get a win. Uh, that was definitely, you know, on our minds. Uh, you know, you take a lot away from any game. Um, you know, the one thing that, that we have to do is, as everybody knows, is do a better job of channeling our passion and our energy and that youthful exuberance in a positive direction and play smarter so that we don't hurt ourselves. And I, I don't know what else to tell you about penalties, and I told the team that, is that we just have to own it. And uh, it's really the thing that's holding us back right now. But to get a win tonight against a you know 12th ranked team in the country, uh, down seven to three at half, and just, you know, the thing that's so impressive to me about those young men in there is, uh, you know, their resilience and their grit and their toughness and their, their, their will to win. And we're sitting here at seven and two, and it hadn't been easy. Uh, but they just keep fighting, you know, and that's what they're supposed to do. But not everybody does that even though they're supposed to, and those guys do. And so I'm really proud of them. And uh, some guys had good games tonight. You know, Brett, I think, you know, set a record or tied a record. I thought uh, Matt Mengel played outstanding for us. I thought that, uh, you know, we ran the ball f 59 times. <laughs> it's like Bear Bryant, 59 times for a lot of yards. And then our defense was outstanding. You know, that is a high octane offense. I mean, they, they, uh, I think they were ranked fourth or seventh or something like that in the country in total offense. I know they were in the top 10 and um, they scored on the first drive and didn't, didn't, didn't score after and had 255 yards total offense. And today was the first game that I felt defensively like we, like, did what we were supposed to do on every play. Now, you guys hear me say it all the time, you know, don't pop a gap, just do your job. Uh, trust your teammate. Um, and we did that, and you saw the results, you know. And that's what we've just got to continue to emphasize, and we've got to continue to work on and, you know, continue to grow, and I think we will. So I'm just really proud of those guys, and it was a big win for us at home and keeps us alive, and, and that's what we're after. So I know you guys have deadlines. Coach, right here. Could you elaborate on Brent's performance tonight? His running and his passing was pretty outstanding. Yeah, uh, Brett's a winner, you know. Um, you look at his total yards passing, they weren't great, 189 yards, but he was 19 at 26, so he continues to have a great completion percentage. Um, he ran the ball for 147 yards. You know, he's, I think that might be three games in a row where he's over 100. He just, you know, I don't know. I know it's two at least. I think it might be three. Um, He's just, you know, he's a winner. He's a competitor. You know, even when it's not perfect, he just gets it done. Was that by design, his running? No, not necessarily. Or I mean, was that just situational situation where he analyzed and says, "I better." It run. was both. You know, some of those are uh, plays where, dependent upon the read that he gets, he's either going to hand it off or he's going to tuck it and go. Some of those were passes um, where, you know, they were playing man and they had their back to him, so he took off and ran. Um, the obvious one mis. Miss Q was the fumble there at the end. Um, he was doing the right thing. He was trying to stay in bounds. Uh, I'd like to teach him to just slide rather than you know get in someone's arms where there is a chance of the ball coming out. Um, it wasn't obvious to me that it was a fumble, so I felt like the best thing to do at that point in time with three timeouts was to uh, was to challenge it and, and see what happened. It wasn't going to hurt us to challenge it. Jim, um, how hard would it have been for you guys to attain your goals had you not got this one tonight? We did, Chris. I know. We got it, baby. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you talked all week about we did. not wanting to say must win. It, it would have been, um, it would have been impossible. I would say, you know, the way the Pac-12 is laid out and this competitive as this conference has become, this is a great football conference. This is a great conference. Period. It's a great basketball conference. It's a great baseball. I mean, champions are made in this conference. Champions are made at UCLA. It's a, but if we hadn't won this one tonight. Um, yeah, it would have been it would have been taking a lot of things to happen for us to get where we want to get. Now we're still in the thick of it, and things still have to happen, you know. But we got to just keep playing well. Coach, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, right here. It seems like uh, you guys are more successful when Huntley uses his legs and he's running the ball, and he's, he seems like he's more lethal when he's that dual threat instead of sitting in the pocket, you know, taking these sacks. Are you encouraging him to run more, or is it? Are you designing plays where he he can take off? 
like like uh, mm -hmm. boots or whatever? I think that's very accurate, what you said, that we are better when he is the dual threat. I think that any team that has that type of quarterback uh, that can make plays with his legs or his arm, it's just so hard to defend. That's one of the things that makes playing defense in college football and the Pac-12 in particular is difficult as these dual threat quarterbacks. But, uh, you know, we haven't changed anything in terms of our design with Brett running. Uh, I think that uh, what's happened is that Brett is seeing the game more clearly, you know, and he's absorbing information quicker. And so he's, he knows when it's time to run, you know, and he's become fearless when he runs. And uh, you just need to make sure he takes care of that football. Edge containment seemed a lot better tonight. Was that just kind of what you're talking about, gap control, or was it something different you guys were doing schematically? No, David, that was just being, you know, doing your job, you know, doing it right, you know, trusting the guy next to you to do his job. And trust is a big word, and it's an important word when you play defense. Um, you have to have it. And uh, I think we did tonight. But, you know, we talked all week about putting an edge up on the that guy, he, Solomon's a heck of a player, man. I have a lot of respect for him. He's tougher. He took a beating tonight, and he kept coming. And uh, when he is at his best is when he's out there running around. And so we had to keep him in. And the times that he did get out, you saw. I mean, he was able to make some plays. And, you know, they dropped some, fortunately. But he, he can, he's a good player. Man. I like that kid. But EK seemed like he started the game a little quiet. Uh, what, do you, what did you see change for him as the game <laughs> I think you on? guys are just used to him making every tackle, and he didn't have to make every tackle tonight. I don't, think that, uh, I don't think that he wasn't playing well. I think that he was playing well. I just don't know that the plays were coming to him like they typically do or that he was having to cover people like sometimes he has to do. Um, he just was in a great mood all night, you know, like the whole defense was. They were, they were excited. But they were calm, and it was really great to see them reach that level. Now what we have to do is build on that. We can't digress. We have to build on it. I think we will. I think they're maturing. That one fourth and one in the first half on the 44-yard line, what went into the decision to punt there? Um, <laughs> probably you know, the last couple weeks when I've decided that we wanted to go for it on fourth and one. I haven't been successful. Um, I heard some boos, but you know, I have to try to make the best decision. I think it, it, so much goes into a decision like that. It's, you know, the pace of the game. How's your defense playing? You know, as your punter in a situation where he's able to pin him down there, and our punter was doing that. So all those things. And uh, with an explosive offense like that, I just did not want to give him a short field. Just did not. Coach, uh, some, high, some uh, first round quarterback hopefuls uh, maybe change their game a little bit towards the end of their, their their big year. Um, Brett hasn't, clearly. You know, he's willing to run the ball and he's willing to put himself in harm's way sometimes. What does that say about him that he wants to be the guy to, to do what he needs to for your team right now? It, it just confirms to me, for me, who he is. He's gracious. He's selfless. Um, he cares about his team. He cares about the present more than he does about his future. And he's committed to UCLA and this team. And, you know, that's what you, you respect about the guy. I think it was three of the last four games you guys had allowed like 240 yards rushing, something like that. Tonight, I think you held them to you know 50 some. What was the what was the biggest difference in terms of defending the run? Honestly, so. it was like it was. See, I'm always hesitant to word use the discipline word with you guys, but it was uh, it was guys just doing their job being disciplined in their responsibility, not popping a gap. And then, like I said, when everyone's doing that and they trust each other, it, it's amazing how it can work, you know? <laughs> and hopefully they're getting it. I think they are. I think they're getting it. All right, thanks, thanks, everyone.